Hello, my dear Fingsters, and welcome to another article overview. In uh, today's episode, we'll go uh, through expressions and con control structures in uh, Solidity Smart Contracts. Specifically, uh, we'll concern ourselves with uh, positional and uh, named function calls. Uh, with our topic overview, we'll cover function parameters and arguments, and we'll go into details on function parameters and after that function arguments will explain the difference and then we'll go on to positional function call named function call and also uh, see some uh, differences between uh, positional versus named function call but not in the ultimate effect but uh, in more uh, in a more organizational uh, perspective Okay, so uh, regarding function parameters and arguments, uh, they are optional, but often crucial parts of a function call. Meaning that uh, if uh, our function needs to get some data from the outside, it will do so by using parameters and arguments. So there are two perspectives of looking at a function. So function has these input points, and uh, from the inside perspective or a function definition perspective, these input points are called parameters. On the outside perspective uh, or the function use perspective, we are feeding our function via a function call uh, with arguments. So every argument that we pass to our function call will end up in a specific parameter. Uh, so function parameters constitute the function definition. And uh, with that in mind, an input point is uh, called a parameter in practice. Or if uh, you'll be looking uh, some texts uh, on the compilers and uh, programming language design, you will also notice that uh, there is a term uh, used and it's called formal parameter. So formal parameter in computer science is equal to a parameter. A uh, function can have zero or more parameters. In theory, uh, this number goes up to 16 uh, parameters or input points said in more general way. However, in practice, uh, this number can go even lower, maybe somewhere uh, above 10 parameters or, or even lower. And in industry jargon or shop talk, a parameter is often interchanged with the term argument, but uh, there is a difference and we'll see this difference on the next slide. So uh, in contrast to a function parameter, which are, which constitute the function definition, function arguments are involved in function use. So what are function par uh, arguments? Function arguments are specific values that are forwarded to the function or, uh, in specific into the function code or into the function body. That two are the same. So an input point uh, from function arguments perspective is called an argument. And once again, uh, from the point of view of computer science, an argument is also known as an actual parameter. So to recap, uh, a parameter in industry is called a formal parameter in computer science and an argument in practice or industry is called in computer science as an actual parameter. Uh, I repeat, uh, in industry jargon, there is often a uh, misconception about uh, parameter and argument, which one is which, and they are often interchanged. Uh, if you still, if you're still having some doubts about uh, some doubts about uh, what is a parameter and what is a, an argument, you will be able to notice. Uh, which one is which right away. If you are looking at a function definition and you take a look at the signature of the function, at, at the list 
of uh, variables in the function declaration in the function head what you're looking at are parameters or variables and when you're looking at a function call so it's function definition versus a function call if you are looking at a function call uh, you will notice that there are some specific values given to the function call and these specific values being it some uh, variables from the uh, outside context of the function or specific constants like literals these are the arguments so what is given uh, to a function call is an argument and what is given what is <coughs> i'm sorry and what is defined in a function definition is a parameter uh, with positional function call, I'm just continuing on this story from the previous sentence. With positional function call, we are passing arguments to a function uh, by respecting uh, the order of uh, parameters in the function definition head. So if uh, our function is defined as uh, set so set is a, a function name and then we have two parameters or two variables declared as unsigned integer here and here and their names are first and second and if we want to pass argument two to the parameter first and if we want to pass the argument three to uh, the argument three to parameter second then we have to list them here in the same order as they appear in the function head on the contrary if we would like to use named function call uh, then uh, the arguments are mapped to the function parameters by their name so the function signature is the same however when we are <clears throat> calling a function or in other words making a function call we will just open curly braces and uh, inside will list a variable or parameter names in any order this is the main point. It, they can be here in any order. And uh, uh, to map uh, an argument to a parameter, we would just use a parameter name, colon, and the argument. And the same here, the parameter name, colon, and the argument. So we could have done the same thing by saying first column two and second column three. It has the same effect as with the positional functional argument, uh, functional call, I'm sorry. So uh, there is one more philosophical than any other uh, question. When should we use positional and when sh should we use uh, named function call uh, so there is no real uh, pros and cons however uh, as positional function calls need their, their arguments ordered in the same way as uh, as the parameters are in the function uh, signature and uh, named function calls don't need to do that they just map an argument which is presented here as a value to a parameter or parameter name to be precise which is presented here as a key so uh, for uh, named function calls it's all the same and with positional function calls we have to be uh, careful however if we wanted to know that a function signature changed 
if we are using some external function, if we want to know that uh, uh, function signature changed, we would know this immediately if it changed in a way that the parameter, that the order of parameters is uh, different than in the first version. Of, for instance, if we had a a formula, a function that uh, calculates a mass of a certain matter by taking a volume of this matter and uh, and the density of this matter. So as we know, uh, mass is um, calculated by multiplying uh, volume and uh, density. And uh, if we had a function that calculates or computes some uh, mass for us, and we gave as the first argument uh, volume and as the second density, and these two, uh, these two arguments, these two parameters got changed, then uh, if uh, the parameters were of different type, let's say uh, the first one was uh, for volume was an uh, integer, and the second one was, uh, let's say, unsigned int 16, uh, we would experience an error from our compiler if we used a positional uh, function call because there would be a mismatch between uh, between arguments and uh, the parameters. And this is why we say that positional function call is strict regarding function signature changes. So every signature change will be detected, as I mentioned just a moment ago, via a function call mismatch <clears throat> However, uh, this approach also takes more code maintenance and refactoring, especially if uh, we're doing our code editing completely by hand and not using an IDE. So it's a matter of personal opinion, should we go for a positional function call? On the other hand, if we are going with a named function call, our code is more flexible towards function signature changes because even if uh, the order of uh, the parameters in the function signature changes, uh, our naming scheme will uh, fix that for us and everything will be just as it should, as if nothing changed. However, some changes in the function signature will uh, may in that way uh, go undetected. So it's also a matter of personal opinion and uh, regarding a specific situation, we should always ask ourselves and evaluate, is this a behavior that uh, we're getting the same as the behavior that we want? And if it is, then we can use either of the approaches, uh, then it only uh, becomes a matter of our own preference. Okay, my dear Fingsters, uh, this would be all for today's episode. Thank you for your attention and for following uh, these lectures, these article overviews. I'm uh, honored to have you with me. I hope you managed to learn something uh, new and interesting. And until the next time, take care. Bye.